Hello! Good day everyone! I'm Teacher Glenda F. Villanueva and welcome to Fun Learning Adventure here in my English class. Let us all discover the joy in learning English. How are you today? I hope you are all fine, safe, and in good condition. Are you excited to learn a new lesson today? I hope so, because I'm so excited to share this lesson to each and every one of you. But before we proceed with our lesson, remember to have the following things with you. First, your learner's packet. Second, your ball pen. And the third one, if there's any, your answer sheet. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to do the following things. First, define what is opinion and evidence. Second, list down evidence that will support your opinion. And the third one, show tactfulness when communicating with others. Let us now define the meanings of the following words. What is an opinion? Have you ever heard the word opinion? That's right. An opinion is a personal belief. It is a statement of what a person or an author thinks or believes. It also relates to how someone feels about something. Others may agree or disagree with your opinion. However, you must back it up with evidence and provide supporting details to persuade your target audience and listeners. Our second word is the word evidence. What is an evidence? Evidence is anything that tends to prove or disprove something. It is mostly thought of as a proof to come to a belief, conclusion, or judgment about a topic. These may include examples, images, personal experiences, diagrams, charts and graphs, experiment, survey, and any other secondary sources of information. Providing evidence to support opinions requires the audience to use their background knowledge and think more deeply about it. The following sentence pattern will help you in citing evidence to prove your opinions. This will also guide you to relate and yet answer to the essential questions. Take a look at the given example that we have. I adopted a report from the Manila Times. So let us apply this using the report below. In the first paragraph, the text states that there are around 1.2 million teens having babies over a 10-year period. It supports my opinion that teenage pregnancy is one of the most serious problems here in our country. Let's move on to the second sentence pattern. In our report, it clearly shows that third teenage pregnancy costs 33 billion in economic losses. Based on what I read, all of us should exert effort in stopping teenage pregnancy because we are all affected by it. Example found in this report. So that's how we are going to use the following sentence pattern to help us and guide us in providing evidences to our opinions. I told you be late, uh, lately that we have an adventure today. I will take you to another world to the world under the sea and i'm gonna introduce you to one of my friend to one of my sea creature friend yes oops but before that before i forgot because i'm so excited 
Let me change my outfit first because I cannot swim with this outfit. Wait for me. I'll be back. Yeah, so now I'm ready to change my outfit and I'm ready to swim. I'm so excited to swim and introduce my friend to you. While I am swimming, I will sing a song just for all of you. So listen in three, two, and one. Let's swim and swim, 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 swim in a wide and deep blue sea. Let's find my friend, let's find my friend who's nice and gentle to me. Let's swim and swim, 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 swim in a wide and deep blue sea. Let's find my friend, let's find my friend who's nice and gentle to me. Oh, look! Over there! I found my friend! Hello, friend! This is my friend. Do you know what kind of sea creature is this? Are you familiar with this kind of sea creature? If your answer is yes, that's great. But if not, let me tell you more about my friend. Listen while I read the passage to you about my friend Dugong. Dugongs. Dugongs are warm blooded sea animals. They are commonly known as sea cows because of their fondness for grazing on underwater sea grass. They are the only aquatic herbivorous mammals because they feed on plants exclusively. What makes it more interesting is that dugongs are more closely related to elephants than to other marine mammals like whales, dolphins, or seals. Dugongs swim using their whale-like tail and use their front flippers for balance and turning. They are often called as gentle giants as they move slow yet graceful. Another trait that makes them different from dolphins and whales is their ability to hold their breath for more than 15 minutes. These enormous vegetarians have a trunk-like flexible upper lip, thick skin covered with bristles and nails on their forelimbs and replaceable teeth. They can weigh approximately 400 kilograms and grow up to 3 meters long. They can reach the age of 17. Dugongs can be found in the warm waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Sadly, they are in danger in many parts of the world. Populations that once flourished around India, Africa, and other tropical islands in the Indian Ocean are now endangered due to degradation or loss of habitat, the sea grass. Large populations of dugongs still inhabit the coastal Australia since they are protected by the law. Now that we have already read the passage, let us answer the following questions to check if you do understand the passage. Use the sentence pattern in answering the questions that I have already shared to you earlier. So these are the questions. Question number one. What is the passage about? Why are they called as gentle giants? If your answer is yes, the passage is about Dugo. You got it right. Very good. Why are they called as gentle giants? Based from what I have read, it is clearly stated that in paragraph number 3, they are often called as gentle giants because they move slow yet graceful. Now let's proceed. So question number 2. How are dugongs classified as herbivorous? Support your answer. Dugongs are classified as the only aquatic herbivorous mammals. In the first paragraph, the text states that they feed on plants exclusively. Number three questions. Why are dugongs more
more closely relative to elephants than other marine mammals like dolphins, whales, and seals. What statement in the passage support your answer? Okay, in paragraph number two, it states that dugongs are more closely related to elephants. And in paragraph number four, it says that these enormous vegetarians have a trunk-like flexible upper leaf. Okay, that's nice if you got it. What do you think are the reasons why dugongs become endangered? Yes, very good. As stated in paragraph number 5, dugongs are endangered due to degradation or loss of habitat. How sad for those kind of same creatures. Now, let's proceed with question number 5. What can we do to prevent the extinction of these animals? Yes, just like what Australia do, our government should protect the coastal area and fishermen should stop illegal fishing of dugo. In that way, we could help or prevent the extinction of these sea creatures. Good job, guys! Now, take a look. I have here a chart, and this is what we call the what, why, and how strategy. This can be used to help you remember to include appropriate evidence. In the first column, we have the what question. What question represents your opinion? Just like to give an example that we have based from the passage that we have read. What do you think our dugongs look like? And the answer is, dugongs are like elephants. That is your opinion. Let us now proceed to the second question. Why? This represents your reasons. You have to state now your reason. Why do you think that dugongs are like elephants. So your answer could be dugongs and elephants are enormous. They both have a trunk or a nose. Next, under the how question, we have the question that how did you know that they are both enormous and they have the same trunk or nose? So in this case, you have to cite or provide an evidence that will prove your opinion and your reason. In the second paragraph, the text states that Dugongs are more closely related to elephants. In the fourth paragraph, it states that these enormous vegetarians have a trunk-like flexible upper lip. And if you can still remember, I have shown you an image of a dugong. And the image shows that it has a trunk-like upper lip. So this strategy or this chart is very helpful for you to determine what, why, and how are you going to provide evidence to support your opinion. Remember this class, everyone has the right to express his own opinion. However, it is considered irresponsible if it is expressed without evidence. Hence, in expressing opinion, one should be tactful. 
every person must understand what has transpired so the opinion expressed become valuable and meaningful as well as persuasive to the audience. Okay, now let's move on to learning task number one. Let us now proceed in answering learning task number one. Here is the directions. Read the writing prompt carefully. Answer the questions, then provide evidence found in the passage to support it. Use appropriate sentence pattern and write your answers in your notebook. I will be giving you five minutes to do this activity. Now, let us answer the question for passage letter A. Why do you think Susan would not go to work? What happened to her? And then, list evidence to support your answer. The answer is this. Susan needs to stay at the hospital for two more days because she has a patient that needs to be watched over. Very good! You got it right! Based on what I read, Susan has been in the hospital outside the operating room for so long because we have read in the passage that Susan has been walking back and forth outside the operating room from 10 o'clock in the evening until 2 a.m. the following day. Let's proceed now to passage letter B.
Friedrich realized that there was nobody home in Daniel's house. How are you going to prove that? Based on what I read, Daniel's house was dark and when Friedrich rang the bell, there was no answer. Very nice. That is the answer for our question in passage letter B. I'm so glad that you have provided the correct answers for our learning task number one. So here is another activity, our learning task number two. And the directions state that, read the passage carefully, answer the questions in your notebook. It is entitled, Stepping Up for What is Just. The image that you can see is Rosa Park. And in this passage, you will find out what is the story behind her. One evening in December 1955, Rosa Parks rode on a bus home after a long day's work. During that time, black Americans were separated from white Americans in the bus. The front part of the bus was the section for white Americans. The back part was a section for black Americans. When the front part of the bus became full, black people had to give up their seats to white people. Rosa sat in the black section of the bus. Shortly, the white section was filled. The bus driver asked Rosa to give up her seat to a white person, but she refused. She was tired of the treatment that she and other black Americans received every day. Rosa and the bus driver had an argument. Eventually, the driver had Rosa arrested by the police and sent her to jail. This made the black citizen of Montgomery angry, so they decided to boycott the buses by not riding on them. Instead, they organized carpools or walked when going to work. The boycott, which has done hoping that city officials would be forced to change the unfair segregation laws, lasted for 381 days. Although the bus companies were losing a lot of money, the city official did not give in to the demands of the black citizens. Rosa's refusal to follow an unjust law was not disregarded, though, 13 months after the boycott started, the U.S. Supreme Court declared that the segregation in public transportation was unconstitutional. In 1964, the U.S. Congress passed a law known as the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that put an end to racial discrimination in the country. The bravery shown by Rosa Parks that night proved to be a transformative move for the American people. So let us now answer the questions for the passage. Number one, what does racial discrimination mean? How was racial discrimination shown in American before it ended in 1964? Have you ever heard the word racial discrimination? Are you familiar with it? Okay, so racial discrimination is when a person is treated less favorably than another person in a similar situation because of their race, color, descent, national or ethnic origin, or immigrant status. Okay, you get it. Next question number two. How did Rosa Park show her bravery? Fill in the graphic organizer below to show your answer. Support it by providing the evidence. Rosa Park is a brave woman. How are you going to prove that Rosa is truly a brave woman based from the passage that you have read? Yes, the first one, 
she refused to follow an unjust law. And then, the second one, she was not afraid to argue with the driver and to be sent to jail. Exactly! Let's proceed to question number three. In your opinion, what's it right for Rosa to refuse to follow the law at that time? Explain your answer. Good! Yes! Because in paragraph 2, it clearly states that she was tired of the treatment that she and other black Americans received every day. Very good! Next question. Does racial discrimination still occur around the globe? List down your evidence. Yes! Based in research, surveys, and reports, an example of it is the ethnic minorities who face discrimination in the labor market and limited access to education and health care all over the globe. Question number five. How will you help indigenous people like Bajaus from people who treat them unjustly? So what is your opinion about question number five? That's great, okay? I will tell them that they should respect them and treat them equally just like others. So we have to avoid racial discrimination because we are all human and we are living in the same country. That's right. Let's now proceed with learning task number three. Directions. Complete the what, why, how chart on the next page by choosing one topic from the box. Then write two reasons about it. Review your reasons and have a list of evidence to support each. Use appropriate sentence patterns in providing evidence. Do this in your notebook. So you're going to choose from the given choices below choose at least one i will be giving you three minutes to do this activity so let's have your answer you can choose any from the given choices it could be best movie or tv show best song musician or band Best restaurant in your province, best place to visit, best story books. So let us now answer the what, why, how chart. So let us have an example. Best movie, for example. Finding Nemo is the best movie for me. So why? Why did I choose Finding Nemo as the best, best movie out of all movies that we have? It is a heartwarming story between a father and a son. That is my reason. Next, let us answer the question how. How do you know that Nemo is the best movie and it is a heartwarming story between a father and a son. So now I'm going to cite an evidence that will prove my opinion and my reason. So here are the list. Finding Nemo received different awards and nomination as best movie. And aside from that, I personally watched the movie i hope you got it correct too whatever topic that you choose they are all accepted as long as you answer the questions what why and how and most importantly you must provide an evidence from the opinion and reasons that you have right okay that's good very good class now, let's move on to learning task number four. Here is the directions. 
Complete the statements below by supplying the missing terms. Select from the given choices below. Write your answers in your notebook or answer sheets. Number 1. And blank is a view or judgment form about something and is not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. What is the missing term in number 1? Write your answer. Okay, the correct answer is opinion. Next. However, no one can possibly give a point of view if she or he could not provide a piece of blank. What is the missing term in number two? Good, the correct answer is evidence. The third one, as the saying goes, Everyone is entitled to his or her opinion. However, expressing a personal belief without supporting details, basis, or bits of evidence is considered what? Exactly! Considered irresponsible. Hence, one should be blank when giving an opinion. What is that? One should be Exactly! One should be tactful. Every person must understand what has transpired so that the opinion expressed, either written, drawn, or spoken, becomes worthy. And what is the missing term? The last term is meaningful as well as convincing to the target audience. Very good! Let us now move on to the last activity. Directions. Read each statement carefully. Write the letters of your answers in your answer sheet. Number 1. Which of the following statements is incorrect? A. An opinion is what a person thinks or believes. B. An opinion is necessarily based on facts or knowledge. C. An opinion relates to how someone feels about something. Or letter D. An opinion seems true, valid, or probable to one's own mind. Answer for question number one. You got it right! Letter B. Number two. Which of the following statement is not true about evidence? Remember, not true. A. It supports a point of view. B. It can be found in secondary sources. C. It tends to prove or disprove something. Or letter D. It speaks for itself once introduced or presented. And the answer is letter D. Very nice. Next, number three. Which of the following is not a source of evidence? A. Surveys. B. Personal experience. C. Graphs or charts. Or letter D. Speeches from irrelevant people. What do you think is the answer for number three question? Great! The answer is letter... Letter D. Let's now proceed to the number four question. Which of the following opinions is supported with evidence? A. Dogs are better than cats. B. Neogyugan Festival is deemed as the festival of all festivals. C. The survey shows that Parents prefer modules over online learning. And letter D, Lucena North 1 Elementary School Canteen serves the best merienda. What is the answer? There is a clue word. Okay, the answer is letter C. Because of the word survey, meaning... Statement.
comment letter C is supported with evidence. Very good. I'm so happy that you got it right. And for the last question, question number five. Which of the following is not true in providing evidence to support opinions? A. It is a way to persuade the audience. B. It reflects authenticity and relevance. C. It helps the audience to think uncritically. And letter D. It helps the audience connect their previous knowledge to current situation. What is our answer for question number five? Think about it! Yay! And the answer is letter C! Very good! You got them all Very nice! And for our reflection, in your notebook, you will write your personal insights about the lessons using the prompts below. I understand that. So you will write the things that you have understand in our lesson today. And then the second one, I realized that. After our lesson, what have you realized? And then the last one, I need to learn more about. You are going to write, what are the things that you want to know more about our lesson? That's all for today, class. Thank you for listening to me. Don't forget to answer your modules. Till the next time, see you again. And remember to keep safe, everyone. God bless and goodbye!